Hello, everybody. It is a very wet Stamble Bay. Um, I am um, <laughs> staff. What's your first name? It's just that I have two staffies, and so now I think that my dog Spud is talking to me on the thing, which is kind of freaking out. Um, sorry, some um, someone has. Um, hang on. Someone is trying to register for this. Um, Um, someone has tried to register and having a struggle. Well, anyway, um, good morning, Petra. Good morning, Nikki. Good morning. Um, hi, Katie. Um, good morning, Rachel. Um, so we're going to get started in about one minute. We've got 81 people registered for this, but I don't know how many will turn up to the actual webinar. Um, I'm looking forward to walking through this with you. Also, I hope you enjoy my, my pretty slides. We're doing a bit of a brand overview at the moment and changing a few things, which includes making our sides, slides prettier. Hi, Jo. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. This is, this is a um, for those of you who have worked with before, a lot of this will just be a refresh um, and just a good overview of what basically you need in terms of stepping from essential businesses. I know pretty slides are important, right, Catherine? Hey, Catherine, I know that you don't need to use Canva because you are a stunning designer person. Um, but oh my gosh, um, we're, we're, we're creating all our um, all our marketing clutter on Canva at the moment and creating like sets so we can actually have it all set and more consistent. Boy, am I enjoying that. Um, okay, we're going to get started because it is nine o'clock. So welcome to Essential Sets for Small Businesses. Just a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, the first thing is um, there is like an open question space in the bottom, but I actually find I can um, keep the chat open at the top. So if you have questions throughout the session, please do ask them. At the end of the session, um, you'll wait for two hours because they have to do something with the webinar. They do something weird with it. Um, and then they will see, you'll get it sent to you. So if you have to step out for part of it, you'll actually get access for, 40, for 24 hours afterwards. And if someone's missed it today, they will also get access for 24 hours too. That will just be automatically emailed out. But also this afternoon, I will send you... I've, I've got a checklist that goes through the, the steps in here with a few more details for you to go through and kind of walk walk yourself through. So we'll email that out through to you separately. So that will come out. So if your email has been registered correctly in your registration, you'll get that this afternoon. And then we're just going to ask you to take some action. Um, and then next week, I'm going to send you another little email just to say, hey, are you taking action? Um, what have you done? And let me know how you're going. And, and that's all I'm going to do, do for you. Um, definitely, you need to take notes. If you want to learn, take notes. I'm not going to be note taking for you. So um, if you learn best by taking notes, take notes. If you learn best by not taking notes, certainly feel free not to also take notes. But I don't have notes with this. Um, it's a free webinar for you to learn from, and I talk fast, so notes are probably a great idea. What's your name, Profile Floors? Soraya, hello, you're local. I recognize your name. Um, guys, one thing I'd just like to ask you to do, um, so I was originally going to be doing this in Tauranga, so there's lots of people coming who's from Tauranga in here today because I was meant to be there, but you know, level three. Um, but it would be great if you could just tell me what your business is uh, before we move on so I can kind of see. I know obviously uh, we've got Petra from Audible Optics. I know we've got Catherine um, who does design. Um, I know that we've got, um, let me go back, Rachel, who is a... Um, a financial advisor. Gosh, sorry, Rachel. Um, but it'd be great just to have like a little Coke, Wellington glass, sustainable catering. Oh, gosh, that sounds great, Amy. Um, hi, Deidre. It's lovely to see you. Um, Katie, awesome. Nice to see you. Um, vinyl design installation. Great. Excellent. Some lovely broad range of different people coming. That's excellent. Cool. Let's enjoy um, walking through this together then. So a couple of things. We're not talking about strategic marketing around messaging, around who your target market is and all those sorts of things. So that is just like such a big part of what we're doing. And, and so if you don't have that really settled, um, that makes it really hard. This is very much for people who market to a local area. So for example, um, 
children's book, um, Joe with the children's picture books. You can come and enjoy this, but it won't be as specific for you because this is for people who are in a specific area and want to market specifically to that area. That is what this is for. So if you your target market is all of New Zealand, you can pick bits and pieces from this, but that is not what this webinar is for. This webinar is for people who are like a plumber in a particular area or a, you know, a floor layer, a floor layer, floor hair, um, opticians, anyone that needs to target a specific area, this is what this is for. Um, so just want to make sure that you're really clear on that because I don't like people being disappointed um, when, they're, when they're going through things, okay? All right, so who is who is Rachel Claver from Identify? Um, so that's me. Uh, so I am a marketing strategist based at Identify. A lot of you already know me. Um, I um, have been doing marketing strategy for about, I think it's now about 10 years. Um, before that, I was, I've done all sorts of other things. I call myself a career octopus. So I've had my own businesses. Um, I've um, used to work a lot in early childhood and, and have quite a strength in early childhood. My dad was a vet, so I was a vet nurse. Um, did a lot of retail um, and also did a lot of freelance writing um, and other bits and pieces. So I've got a really broad range. Um, our business, Identify, um, we teach people that's what we do um, and we help them do their own strategy and then we do some of the setup on the post connection side around like Facebook advertising, um, marketing automation and email marketing, CRMs and also just doing the overall strategy and training. So we're all about empowering the business owner to help people feel really comfortable. And in terms of selling, that's as much as you're going to get from me. Um, so this is really all about you, but I just want you to have an understanding of who we are. Um, we truly believe and we preach and tell you that you need to work a marketing strategy that's all around building trust. And it's and building trust means giving things away for free or giving value or showing that you are an expert in what you do because people then naturally come and see you. Um, so Janine, um, this one again, so this is your marketing nationwide. So this won't particularly be of benefit to you, although it will give you some reminders of some things that perhaps you might need to be doing from your marketing strategy. Okay, so the first thing is with a local business, all businesses, it's so important to start with trust. But in a local business, it's especially important to start with trust. Because most of our businesses, if we're not looking after our existing customers, then we're going to get into trouble. Um, I once worked with a business um, in a different part of New Zealand to where I live, so not on not in Rodney. Um, and they had this saying, which was a new customer. It's just a customer we haven't pissed off yet. And to me, there's a few problems with that. You could probably get away with it in America or, or the UK or somewhere where there's a big organization if you're going nationwide. But when you're in New Zealand, we're a small nation and you'll run out of people to piss off. Um, also, when you're in New Zealand and you're working locally, it's a small community. And so it's really important to build trust with people now. So building trust includes things like um, when you um, when you say you're going to be somewhere, you're there. Uh, we have recently engaged with a, um, got to be careful, there's a few locals on the space, but um, we've recently engaged with a gardening company and they were meant to come and see us once a fortnight and do some gardening because we've been really busy through lockdown um, and beyond. And so we did this. They don't, I have to follow up with them every time. So I've just fired them because trust, trust is the most important thing. It's easier to keep an existing customer than it is to go and get a new one. Um, and so it's so important to do that. And I'm saying there's someone who for a long time didn't understand this as a business owner. Um, we built a big business and identify we had 14 staff. Um, it was built really higgledy piggledy. Um, we won awards for our, our culture, but actually inside the culture was not good. It was out, out, outwardly it looked great, internally it wasn't great. Um, and, and part of that was was that it grew so fast that we didn't have the systems and processes in place to help us actually walk through how to make sure that we looked after our customers. Um, and so that was one of the things that when we broke everything back down again and rebuilt our business, we went, okay, we need good processes. And they've been tested for us the last few months where we've had um, really had to try and make sure that, that what we promised before someone comes and works with us is also what they get afterwards. 
And that's hard when you are full because you, it's tempting to let things slide. And, and when there's a small team, that's tempting. So for us, it's been about stemming some of that growth that's potentially there to make sure we can try and keep that consistent. Um, the other thing is, is that quite often people have misunderstandings around what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And so often that comes from when you're working at speed, not delivering those things and explaining expectations. So one of the things I've been doing in the last month is really carefully documenting exactly what we do and what we offer and all those different things so that before we talk to someone, we have that in mind because trust is the most important thing. So you need to have that and a good sign that you have the trust of your customers is that you have good word of mouth referrals so they're referring you to other people so you know especially if you've got a group or something like that and someone says hey who's the best one at doing this or whatever that they will say hey this is a good person to do this and that they're coming back to you those are the two things that mean that you've done a good job so if you've got lots of customers who you do one lot of work for and they never come back or they don't refer other people to you there's a, there's a thing implicit in there because New Zealanders aren't great about saying things negative to us or being open with us. And so you need to make sure that you've got that good word of mouth referral and you've got that good repeat business before you look at other forms of marketing because otherwise you're just putting stuff into a broken vessel. Um, and look, I was um, so touched because I shared this um, this webinar in our um, Hibiscus Coast page, local page, as well as obviously having all my beautiful tauranga people coming along and a few other people from around. Um, and it was really awesome because a couple of people jumped on and said, oh, I've you know, enjoyed this or this is good. And 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 that was, that for me, that was really important because I hadn't earned that three years ago. And, and so it is really important to understand that trust is something that we have to trust our customers, but they need to earn, we need to earn their trust by doing a good job. And that's about showing up consistently, doing things, making sure we're looking after people. And there is a contract of agreement between the two. I can do the best job I can do, but if the customer's not doing their side, well, then there's going to be a problem. But it's all about making sure that you help them understand that there are some things that you are still responsible to do. You know, so for example, if I have cleaners, I can't leave my house in a tip so they can't clean. You know, there are some responsibilities there on both sides. Um, so we start with trust. Trust is important. So if you're not getting that word of mouth referral, you need to fix these things in your business that you need to fix. We actually say that we work with New Zealand's best kept secrets because we say we only work with people who are getting those word of mouth referrals and their repeat business. Um, we can help you if you don't, but we have to help you in other areas. We have to suggest you go and work with HR or systems or improving the communication and all those sort of things because there are endemic problems that are not going to cause you to grow. Um, so that's the first thing. We always start with trust because in a small community, word of mouth is incredibly incredibly powerful um, so it's super important that we make sure that we take that time to build that um, and and look if you've broken trust if you're not getting this at the moment and you feel that you need to have it um, then you if you if you if you're going to have it and you need to have it um, you can fix it. Uh, we did have a situation several years ago where I had this realization that we had not built trust. Um, the way we resolved it is we went we went back to every single person we'd worked with in that last year and apologized to them. And then we went back and we reworked that work, redid that work with them for six months to get that back. So, and it worked. And actually, now those people have become our best and biggest referrers. You can fix it if it's broken, guys. Um, and I'm not assuming any of you are in this situation, but I cover it because it is actually the most important part um, of, of marketing locally is having a business that people trust because mouths talk. So you need to have that. All right, let's get into the marketing stuff now. All right, so the first thing is, and I'm going to start with this. People might be surprised I'm starting with this, but I'm making no perceptions around where your business is and who you are. But the first thing you need to make sure is that you've got a Google My Business page. Who knows they have a Google My Business page? And who does not know? Great. Excellent. All 
Great. So Profile Floors NZ, you need to have one. And Nikki, great, you can do it. Yes, Audio Optics definitely does. Okay, so we're going to go through and have a little talk about why it's important. So one of the reasons it is super important is that more and more people are using um, voice search. So we need to have Google My Business because that's one of the things that when people ask on here and they go, Siri, show me where, um, you know, Siri, show me where a, a marketing consultant is near me. Um, it will show, it will come up with people who are, have got a Google My Business page. The other thing is, is that Google obviously is related to search engine optimization, which is how people find you on the internet. And most of us use Google to search. Okay, a couple of us widows use Bing um, and all sorts of other stuff, but most of us use Google My Business to help us find things. Um, the other reason that Google My Business is really important is if you don't have a website yet, Google My Business can actually stick as a website for a time being um, and can help people find you if they're looking for what you do. Um, so it's super, super important. It's free. You literally just Google, Google My Business page, and it will come up with a thing of, would you like to have a Google My Business page? And you can go in and create it. You might already have one. So before you do that, I would recommend searching for your name, your business name, and seeing if it comes up with a Google My Business page. I'm just going to show you here. Let me just get my little um, Google thing here. And let me just come back here so I've got the right page. So here's Google. You can all see Google. Just checking because, you know, some people struggle to see the thing. Great. Okay, cool. If some, if for some reason you can't see anything in here um, and it stops and the screen goes black or you can't hear me, the best thing to do is to come out of the webinar and come back in again. Sometimes it's a connectivity problem, I think with the rain and also the fact that so many people are working from home, there are issues. So if that does happen, just log out and log back in again. It should be okay. Okay. So in here, I'm going to say um, marketing. Oops, I'm going to spell it right. based on Ottawa, so I'm going to go marketing consultants or marketing consultancy Ottawa. Okay, so the first thing that we can see on here is that you have a whole lot of people who've paid for Google ads. Most people know that those are ads, some people don't and they click on them. Um, just a little thing, if you have a Google ad um, and you for yourself and you click on it, just remember that you're paying, you're char you're paying yourself to see that it's coming out of your money, so don't do that. You're paying Google to, to see your website. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. Hopefully I'll be here. Phew. Okay, so I've actually just changed um, our thing from marketing consultant to marketing agency. Um, so this will change, um, soon this will change to marketing agency, Ottawa, but I'll also be here. Um, and so you can see that it comes up with a map. This is called, this is called the big three. Um, and you want to be in the big three. So you can see that one of the people that are here is actually an ad. So I'm actually completely owning this space here um, with my Identify Marketing one here and the Marketing Consultant. I've got a separate one for Rachel Claver because I'm being a sneaky person um, who's, it's reason because I'm going to change this agency. Consultant means I've got two words. I'm just being a bit sneaky. But anyway, I was trying something out to see if it worked and it does. So I'm sticking with it. But if you just saw that and you had never heard of Identify or Calvary or Rachel Claver, tell me which one of these just on site would you choose to, to ring first? The middle one. Why would it be the middle one, Deidre? 100 reviews. So one of the things, oh, thanks. Thanks, Profile Floors. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> so... Um, Oh, you like the anonymity. Um, yeah, so 100 reviews makes a huge difference. So we obviously, when we do a map it, we also ask our clients to review us. We ask them to have reviews. So when someone has done work with you, it's really highly advisable to have a Google My Business page and then you can send them a link. It's very easy to do. You literally just send them a link in their emails um, and say, would you like, would you, if you've got something nice to say about us, could you please say it on our Google page, Google My Business page, or review us on Google. You can say, hey, if there's any problems, please let us know, because we'd like to fix them. If there, uh, if there wasn't and you're happy, we'd love it if you give us a nice review. 
Um, and so it's really powerful. And, and I have actually been going even beyond that. And I've been asking people specifically to go and ask for specific, I've been asking for specific keywords. So we do Zoho CRM. It's very expensive for us to, to try and compete with all the big agencies who do Zoho CRM. Some have been around for a long time, but they're all poor at marketing. Um, and so I've been, when we work with someone with Zoho CRM, I say, could you please mention the word Zoho CRM or Zoho One or, or a phrase in there in your your thank you or your testimony and they're all happy to do that they're all happy to say you know that they'll do those things and it means that when people are searching for those terms and i don't know if it will do it let's just see if we if it works now because it's a new thing i've been doing recently and it might not be if i go zoho crm Ori, well what happens uh cool it's just coming up with um it's just coming up with identify marketing so it's not coming up any more than besides that um but that works so like one of the things when i was working with um Oriwa optics is i think this will work i go glasses Oriwa. yes can you see that in her in your um testimonial um it's called Oriwa optics you're an optician but the reason that it is showing up is that glasses is being shown here um in part of the testimonial so it's actually really powerful it's a really powerful way to help um, so one of the things I recommend you do, and I'm just going to show you on here now. So I'm just going to go to Identify Marketing on here. So when I Google Identify Marketing, um, you'll see this here. And you'll see I've got here, Edit Your Business Information. Can you see that? Um, on, I'll just make sure you can see that. Um, so on that, did, if my, that's because I've claimed the page. So you can actually, if this is like this, it might sometimes come up with something that says claim this page. Make sure that you, it may be you've already got a page because people have actually already reviewed you and, and have that page. And then it's really important to keep that page alive. So you can see that I post, I actually schedule them in. Um, I post in, in here all the time and it tells Google my page is alive. It tells Google that my page is interacting, um, that I'm interacting with people. And so it means that Google is more likely to promote my page over other people when I'm talking to people um, because it makes it easier. I've also put in here, as you can see, I've got Hibiscus Coast, Rodney, Auckland. I've got that information in there to help pick up those words in terms of SEO because I'm only obviously putting that um, actual address in here as well. So, so that really helps. You can make sure you've got lots of photos. So we're a, we're a marketing agency. It's hard to get photos um, for us. So we've just got lots of photos of me, essentially. Um, and I need to update this because this is um, old. So we just have a lot of photos of us, plus a few bits and pieces um, around different quotes and information around what we do. Um, a few little videos as well, if people want to see them. Um, and so we've just basically got some, as much information as we possibly can um, in there. It's harder for us. If you've got a product-based business, you can put a lot more information on. Um, oh, so I use um, Zoho Social, um, and I can put a little link of it into, um, actually, I'll just show you. I'll pull it up and I'll show you, Deidre. Um, we'll talk about that when we go into um, in, into the next little bit, Deidre, and I'll show you um, how that looks. So yeah, so Google My Business is the first one. So if you don't have a Google My Business page, your top priority today is to go and get a Google My Business page. Um, if you do have, or this week, if you do have a Google My Business page, your top priority today is to focus and put some time into giving that page some love, putting in your information or your bits and pieces. So clients that work with us, they get a portal and they go through and we, we make sure they do things like add their services, their pricing, all those bits and pieces to really lift up and help people see them locally. And it's Google My Business is particularly powerful for locally based businesses. So if you've got a nationwide business, it's not actually as, as important. Obviously, if people Google you, your name, they'll see it. Will come up so that's beneficial so if you've got good brand recognition for your name it's okay but for local businesses this is the most powerful thing and getting in that top three with your computer without your competitors being in there is really important um, 
because it just means people are lazy. People won't see past that and they've got that map. Psychologically, they're more likely to see it. And as I say, that helps with voice search as well when people are searching and trying to find you locally. So that would be, for me, in terms of Google, the most important thing you can do to market your business locally. Give it lots and lots of love. And, and this is just for Rex because obviously, and actually you've got someone else here is from an early childhood centre, um, the Montessori. There was another one here somewhere. Um, just trying to find you. Um, sorry, oh, Katie. Um, so, um, yes, Katie. So, um, for you guys, obviously, you can't put photos of your children up, but you can put photos of your team. You can put photos of what the center looks like. You can have um, quotes and other things up there to protect your children and have that privacy, um, but still sh showing pictures to help people understand the pages are live. All right. So the next thing is you need regular and good. Yes, Jenny, it is perfectly fine. In fact, that's one of the best things about Google My Business is it's separate. Um, so you can. Do you have to? No, you don't have to wait from the info, the code from Google before you can edit. Um, but sometimes it makes you. It has a few limitations, but you can normally get in and do some stuff. Um, okay, regular and good social media so it's so important to have regular social media people are using it all the time um especially facebook you know if i want to go and book into a restaurant or find a hairdresser's no i wouldn't i wouldn't cheat on your hairdressers i know one of you is here sophie i think you're here i would never cheat on the avenue i promise um so i don't want to get myself into trouble but if i'm looking if i was looking for a hairdresser if i was looking for a plumber or a painter or something like that i'll often put in facebook search rather than google i'll often put painter hibiscus coast or painter stamble bay or something like that and find people who are coming up from that as opposed to google because google often has really conflicting answers and you're, you're succumbed with all the google ads so i will often search for someone there and more and more of us will do that as we actually use facebook as a search tool to do that so if i go to a, a page and it hasn't been touched for two years or it's got just salesy silly silly posts on it all the time I am not interested. Um, it needs to be regular and good social media. So Facebook is, a, and when I say regular, I'm talking two posts a week is, is most of the time is okay. Um, if you're really keen, you can do more, um, but two posts should be, should be okay. If you've got a, uh, if you want to go up a notch, you can definitely use Instagram as well. Um, and Instagram is very good in terms of like the interaction, but it's harder to search on there. So that's more if you've got a community vibe. Facebook is still a better place for you generally until you've built a bit of a community place where people are actually following you locally. Um, I love, I actually follow a lot of local businesses and I really enjoy seeing them on Instagram and it definitely helps me. And I, and I see them more on there than I do on Facebook. But if you're talking about cold business, people who don't know you, Facebook is still better than Instagram tends to be for those things um, just in terms of that. Now I just wanted to quickly show you also um, if you do want to con if you do want to do some things on Instagram um, and you want to do it, I'm just going to show you one of the little tricks you can do to do that. So um, now before you do that, before we go here, I just want to say no judgment guys. I am learning how to use Reel on Instagram, which is a little bit like TikTok, having a lot of fun with it, um, but it means you're about to see me wearing a horrifically fake blonde wig. Um, again, I apologize to my hairdressers if they are watching, um, but I, 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 am do, I am doing marketing parody songs on Reel, and I did one just before now, so um, you will probably have to suffer through it. Great. I'm so pleased you need to see this. I'm feeling so so embarrassed right now. Okay, right. Well, I guess it's on the internet. So what can I do? Okay, so here's my identify page. Just a couple of things. You can use the save stories down here. These are so one of the things with Facebook. So this is my feed here. And obviously, we've got lots of information on here. Um, Instagram is still all about the pretty. It doesn't have to be so perfect, but it is all about the pretty. Um, and I am I am the world's, world's worst person at showing you how to do marketing right because I have actually not updated these. We're in the middle of a changeover of things, and I I got half done and then and then lost, lost interest. And I was meant to give it to someone else to do, and I haven't quite. So you know, hey. Um, so, but one of the things on that is powerful if you if you relatively confident on social media and you really want to step it up 
is I highly recommend using Instagram stories to do that. So Instagram stories only last for 24 hours. They're what we would call ephemeral content, which means that I learned that from Bree, um, one of our strategists. Um, I love that word. Um, but ephemeral content means that it only lasts for 24 hours, but you can put little hashtags in there um, like hashtag hibiscus coast, hashtag tauranga, hashtag, hashtag, all those things. And so any other businesses or people following that hashtag would see it in their stories that day, which is actually a really great way to increase that reach. Um, so I'm just going to show you um, in here. Okay, so here's my here's my little story for today so far. Oh, no, that was my soaps. I'm getting soaps made with um, branded, branded soaps so that I can do it. So there's my little soaps, my little office flowers, um, just someone else had um, that was um, lovely person. Okay, so this is my little real. How many emails should I send to my list? Oh. The answer is more than you're sending them today. More than you're sending them today. Got it. All right, so that's me doing my little my little story. Um, but one of the things. One of the things around doing the stories, it is super easy just to talk to people on a regular basis locally. So, for example, I'm going to pick Rex out of this. Um, you could just have um, your wife or your team doing a little bit of a little bit of a education tip or something like that for your audience locally, and you could just get them to sit, hit record. Do it on the stories and just put like at the, I forgot where you are, Rex, but put that little location in there and have them every day and people would start seeing those stories and it would build great trust. It's around giving strength, giving giving repeat repetition. Same for Oliver Optics. You could have a different pair of frames that you're looking at every day. Um, Tamahiri. So you could actually have that, like or you can have a Hamilton or Waikato in the, in the area. You could do that. Um, or, you know, Rachel, you could be doing some sort of bit around um, just a little bit about financial education, or you could be talking about just real life things around different bits and pieces. You can see on my stories, I have a whole range of things on there. So um, I try and share a broad range of things around talking through for business ownership. So it's not just marketing. It's not about selling. You have to turn that sales hat off when you're using these platforms, because it's not about selling, it's about adding value. So your posts are not, um, so Jenny, are you are you mainly focused on the Hibiscus Coast Whangaparoa? Because if you are, I would definitely keep it local. Rodney Hibiscus Coast Whangaparoa, I would put those as little hashtags. Um, I would do that and, and well, I would test it. I would go and say, look, I'm going to try it for six weeks and see, do I get a bigger growth in this area? Because if you do get a bigger growth in this area, it's less time you're going out of Auckland, which means your profit's going to be up because it's less traveling. So you could give it a test and see what it's like. But yeah, definitely Auckland as a region is also really good. Um, you know, we just recently worked with a company and they go all over Auckland. And part of my strategy advice was actually, let's just choose three or four regions to work on because all over Auckland waste a lot of time and money traveling everywhere if you can grow in areas that are closer it actually saves you money so um we're, we're actually the antithesis of that we actually don't work many very often with local customers um it's just the, the way it's happened um and and so we we don't we don't do that um in fact me putting something up on the hibiscus coast page i found that terrifying so you know <laughs> Oh, I'm such a hypocrite, guys. Um, maybe I should maybe I should listen to my own webinar. All right, okay. So, um, so yeah. So just with 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 Instagram, I love Instagram and I think it's great. But I think people get really caught up with stuff. I would rather you did a really solid approach on Facebook and just got a I've got some regular posting going on Instagram. But the stories are a very powerful way to grow. And video is a really powerful way to grow confidence with people because people see you and interact with you. They can see your um, gestures and see who you are. I mean, I can't see yours, but you can see mine. Um, and it really helps to grow that trust relationship that we talked about right at the beginning to help people feel confident to come. Um, so we're not covering LinkedIn today, um, not locally. However, I would say there are some local areas that have LinkedIn, powerful LinkedIn um things um i love 
LinkedIn. Um, and most of my clients that come from social actually do come from LinkedIn um, originally. Um, around 17% of our clients come from LinkedIn. Um, but we're not covering LinkedIn today because really for most local businesses, LinkedIn isn't part of the strategy that we'd cover off in the must-haves that you should have. I hope that helps. All right. So let me just get this little sheet this little slide up. Um, the next thing is, is you're going to need to have a website. So I know that most of you probably have a website. Um, is, does anyone not have a website? That was a dumb question because if you all got websites, no one's going to, okay, okay, fuel. Someone, someone said no. I was thinking, I'm going to be in trouble because if no one says it, I'll just be waiting for someone to say no and Everyone might be yes. Okay, so if you're going to, okay. So the first thing is you can do a very, very, very basic one um, on Google My Business. It's not pretty, um, but you can do it. Um, she is going to kill me for this, uh, but my daughters have created a band um, that is a secret band with a secret SoundCloud thing and Instagram, and they've gone completely and utterly over the top with it. They've created their own website for it. Like even they know, and they hate marketing because I've completely vaccinated them against it. They know the power of a website. And they, because they had no budget and stuff, they use Wix, which I'm not a big fan of, but you can actually use Wix for free and just purchase a domain name. Um, and they used it with that. Um, I've got a client down in Rangiora who's using Wix um, for an e-commerce site and getting sales out of it. You don't have to spend a lot of money. I, I would recommend that you have a really lovely, clean website. Um, and so the things I'd normally, rec yeah, so definitely I wouldn't recommend Wix. I would recommend Rocket Spark because you can, it's not very expensive to use per month and it's really easy to use. Um, info, I've forgotten what you are, where you're from, Kimberly. What do you do? What's your business? Are we allowed to advertise here? In this webinar? No, not really. This is just, um, <laughs> no. Um, no, I'd rather you didn't because I don't know who you are. So I don't know whether you're, whether you're good. I'd say so that's a cool. Um, massage therapist. Okay, so massage therapist, I'd rather you use, um, maybe use Squarespace. Um, so use Squarespace, um, use, um, definitely use, use Squarespace or use Robert, Rocket Spark. Um, WordPress, if you want to have someone, if you're really a bit more savvy with setting things up or you want to have to pay someone else to do it, um, don't do custom builds. It's just it's just not worth it in terms of interactions and integrations. Um, it just becomes a lot more complicated and expensive. Um, so those are the three things that I would normally recommend. Um, and if you don't use Wix, like Wix is still okay, but yeah. So, okay, so I'm just going to go um, and show you a couple of things that you need to have on your website. Um, where are we? Right, so a couple of things. So I'm just pull this up. So one of the things you can't see on my website is I have a little thing on my Chrome, which is called a pixel finder. So when you've got that Facebook page, you want to be able to get a little bit of code from Facebook, um, which, um, oh, do you know Kimberly? Do you, Petra? Is she a good massager? Are you going to give me a word of mouth referral for her and tell me how awesome she is? Um, so what you need is from Facebook. There's a thing called In Business Facebook, which is a Facebook pixel. And so you need to have one of these on your website because what it means is anyone that comes to your website, you can track them and then retarget them on Facebook. So some of you may already have that. If you don't have that, that is one of the re big, biggest reasons that we recommend that people have a website is that it actually allows you to retarget people because most people who come to your website on the first time, only about one to 3% of those people will actually take action that day. So you're leaving 97% of people who aren't going to come and get in contact with you book or buy or whatever, you're not targeting those people. So having that retargeted ad for local businesses is super powerful. And we're going to cover that a little bit later. But one of the other things I wanted to talk to you is you need to look at your website today and go, how easy have I made it for people to contact me? So we have our contact form right at the top of the page for those people who are like, I know that I need to get in contact with Rachel from Identify today. I'm going to her page and then I get to her page and then, oh, there's all these other things and, oh, look, the pretty lights and, ah, oh, and they forget to get in contact with us and I've lost them. So our contact is right at the top. I find so many people make it really hard to contact 
contact them. If you want them to phone, you have the phone number right up the top of your page and clickable on, an, on a mobile phone. If you want them to email you, put a contact form there right at the top so it's really easy for them to contact you. Yes, does it look as pretty? Probably not. Do you get more leads? Yes, you do. So that's what we want. We want a highly functional website. Now, I'm just going to go through a few things. So during the Map It, um, normally we go through and do quite a lot around the website, and we're not going to do all of that today. Um, but one of the things is you need to really make sure that whatever you're saying on your website is all about the customer and not about you. So you need to think about how you can talk to them and not about you, which is really the only messaging advice I'm going to give you today. Um, but also... I've got lots of what's called call to action. So I've got a call to action here. People can get this information here. They can also get in touch here. So this goes to our contact page so they can get in touch here. Um, and then they can also download our free marketing checklist, which some of you have already done, I know. Um, and so that what that does is if they download that, that's for people who need a bit more time, aren't sure we're the right people. And so what they do is they can download that checklist and then get a valuable checklist, a bit like the one you're going to get today. Um, but that one has a, quite a long email sequence that comes in afterwards that helps people kind of work out whether we're the right people for them. And we won't be the right people for everybody. We're actually very relaxed about that because we, we have to work with people who trust us. And if they don't trust us, it's hard work. So all of this is about us creating trust points to help people know, yep, they're the right people. And if they're not, we don't get offended because we just actually want to work with people who know that we're the right people for them and we know they're the right people for us. I talked to someone um, last week um, who talked to me and we just didn't connect. I just knew that we were not going to be a great, I could definitely do her work for her. And she knows I could do the work for her, but we just didn't connect. It wasn't the right fit. So it's really important to allow that and understand that, that there will be people who will not choose you and that's okay because you're focused on the people who are right for you, um, which is a really important thing. Then if I go down here, um, we've got a little bit of stuff around, you know, um, what you can expect. And so this is actually using um, a, 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 a formatting from a, um, a, a, a ethos around story brand by Donald Miller. Um, we teach that and we show people how to do it. Um, and then I've got another call to action here. I've got a book of time so people can book a time with us. I've got another um, thing there. We actually, I'm going to send you a link to this later on. Then we've got our social proofs. So we've got like people that we've worked with in the past so people can see um, that we're there. Um, you know, we've got some really stellar people, you know, like Oliver Optics there. Um, and then we've got um, our information down here as well. So um, I just changed this this morning because um, one of the things around searches um, for Google My Business is you actually have to make sure you've got your entire address with your name on there. And I hadn't done that. So I've just changed that this morning because um, it was annoying me that I hadn't done it. Um, so that's all. The other thing with the website is you can see our website's very, very basic. Our website has a home page, an about us page, a blogs page, and a contact page. Oh, thanks, Petra. I think you're awesome too. Plus, Angela has now sold me on a pair of glasses I have to have. So the feeling is definitely mutual. Um, so you can see that we have not many pages. We actually have hundreds of pages on our website. But when you come to our website, we keep it really simple and reduce distraction by not having many of those pages publicly. So people find them on search. They'll, if they search for Active Campaign Consultants, they'll go to a page that's, that's our page. But it isn't a page that you can find if you come to the front page. So your website can be very, very plain and very basic and do a good job as long as it's super clear. Um, just a little few other things. Um, um, so if your address is not on your website, it just you just need to, um, it's a good question. I think you need to have a PO box. Do you have a PO box, Jenny? No. I would just use Google My Business and it just means, it just hinders, well, you don't want them turning up where you are anyway, so that's fine. Um, it's more, I'm just trying to get some, um, this, the, the, the voice search thing um, going. Um, but you could use a PO box, uh, sorry, not PO box, like an accountant's address if they live near you, um, that could also work. Um, so, but, so down here, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily put the address and it could be hidden. It could be on a hidden page as well. So, um, but I wouldn't put it on the front page. We, we partly put that because there are so many agencies and consultants that have home offices, which there is nothing to wrong with that. I, I currently am in our office in Ottawa, but I'm quite, I prefer at the moment working in our home office in Manly. Um, 
but it's actually just fixing up. Um, yeah, Google picks up the keywords on hidden pages, definitely. So they're still all there, um, and so it works. I'll just show you, actually, I'll just show you that um, here. Let me just go back to this page. Um, oh, well, I'm glad I could blow your mind, Deidre. Like, that, it's just awesome. Let me just show you. <laughs> Let me just show you this here. Um, if I go in here, hopefully this will work. Um, I'll just go back to this. If I search in here for um, active campaign, well, that's no good, is it? Okay, active. If I go active campaign consultant NZ, which is quite a long keyword phrase, but if I went there and I go, hopefully, um, so you've got a couple of ads. Um, and then you've got us here. So this here, this page here, is not a page you can actually get to um, directly from our the front page of our website. But if you click on that, hopefully, it just seems to be doing a wheel of death right now, um, it will go to a page that um, you can't see. So that's a really, and so that's an old, old page of ours. Boy, do I need to do some changes around things. Um, and you can even do like a download, one of the worst ebooks I've ever written, by the way. I, I really need to go and deal with this, but I have no time. But I'm like, but this is actually written specifically for um, Google, for Google because these are all um, what's called H2 headers. So these are all in there. But you can see it's still on our page. So I can go home and it will go back to the other page but they wouldn't be able to re-navigate to that again unless they hit the back button. So yes, you can do, it's a really, really clever little way that you can actually do those different, different pieces of pieces. So, all right, let me just do, so I have like, you can have secret pages. You can have a secret page that has something like um, Taupo, um, Taupo's Treat, Perfect Hideaway for Auckland Couples. And you can have that as a, as a, as a page that's hidden that people can't see unless they search for it, like perfect hideaway for Auckland couples in Taupo. You could have that as a thing. Uh-oh, okay. Well, you're going to be dangerous, Deirdre. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and then you can actually have it as an end. Well, because um, sometimes those pages aren't necessary for everyone else to see. So those are pages that you only want to be found in search because people are searching for a particular phrase, but they actually muddy up and make the website way too big. Um, they're not necessary. We want a website that gets people to take action, which means booking in with us, taking time on everything. So most of the time we have way too much information on our public website that people can see and it distracts them. It's kind of like walking into the warehouse with a list of three things and coming out with a whole lot of other stuff and you forget your three things. That's essentially what a lot of websites are like. So you need to keep it super simple. But the main thing is to have that Facebook pixel on there and make sure that people have a good way of getting hold of you and one of the most important things about having a website is it makes you look like you're an established business and you're not just a Facebook page business, which is really important. People do check. And even people on here that don't have websites know that you check. You go and check to see if someone's got a website to make sure that someone's existing. It's really important. So, um, so you do that. All right. The ne next thing that you need is you need a simple Facebook ad. Um, so what I mean by a simple Facebook ad, I'm just looking at that and going, what is that language going across that slide there? Um, okay, so a sim the reason I talk about a simple Facebook ad is that lots of digital marketers tell you that it's really important to have a whole lot of Facebook advertising going on and Google AdWords and things like that. They also sell you a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, they, they have, they have, they say, try and see a whole lot of other stuff. So if you've got a CEO, CEO, SEO company locally trying to sell you SEO packages and you only market locally, I want you to not take those up. They are a waste of money. Um, literally one of the best things you can do is Google free business directories and put yourself on all of those. And I'm looking at you, Janine, because I am outing you right now because I know you're going to do this. I'm just reminding you today. So your daily reminder, this is your day to do that, is to put your name on those SEO directories. It actually helps if you've got a national business as well, as well as a local business. But doing that one thing will help you be found locally. You don't need to be spending large amounts of money for a locally based business 
you do not need to be spending large amounts of money on SEO. So if any of you are being told you do, you don't need it. You also don't need those people that come around and say, I'm going to do that proper setup or your Google My Business page and being paid. You don't have that. Yes, it is different, Amy, and I promise we'll get to it. So you don't need that. You don't need to have someone coming in and doing um, like a big Google My Business thing. You literally can set yours up for free yourself. It is very simple. They walk you through how to do it. You can do it yourself. The next thing you do not need is you don't need expensive, fancy Facebook ad funnels. Um, you don't need to be talking about direct around marketing and directing and who you are. Now, unless you're Jenny, who's working with all of Auckland, um, you don't even need to have targeting. So the way Facebook ads work, and I, what I might do is I might just actually show you, um, I'm just going to bring up my business manager. Um, and I'm going to use one of my um, clients. Uh, I'm actually not going to use one of my clients because that makes me feel very uncomfortable. Um, let me just grab this and I'll open it up for you because I want to show you a couple of things. Um, the thing is that Facebook ads were created um, in America and um, they were created by uh, the, the evil Borg of Mark Zuckerberg. No, um, I love what Facebook can do. I don't love it as a user, but I love what it does for businesses. Um, but Facebook, and I hope Facebook didn't hear me say that because I'm I can't cover a lot of stuff with Facebook. I don't want them to hate me. Um, so Facebook ads in America, a small region. So I, I I've I've done some ads for companies here that market to America. And in America, a small region is a million people, like a small group is a million people. We've got 4 million people in New Zealand. So like a, that's a, considered a small audience in America. So, so we've got our scale is completely, completely off. Um, and so I used to go through and use the way Facebook teaches us to do ads and targeting things around New Zealand, and it just wouldn't work. The best way to do an ad locally is to market to everybody locally in that space with your post. Um, and so I'm just going to pull this up um, and just make sure I've got this on here because um, I want to just show you here. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to, where are we? Sorry, I just I didn't mean to put this up and I just realized that I think it'd be good for you to see it. So I just... Okay, so if I go to this one. Okay, so I'm currently running um, ads um, in Facebook for our um, Christchurch map, which hopefully will go ahead unless we have another thing. I haven't started showing it you, you um, Petra. Um, so I'm just going to come and show you in a minute and make sure that you guys can see this. Okay, so this is my ad account. Um, and you can see we did like a little promo of the um, the um, webinar we've got now here, because um, that's our gift back at the moment. Um, but we've got this Christchurch Map at one here at the moment. And in here I've got, it's $10 a day, it's costing $2.16, it's reached 3,000 people, they've seen it twice. Um, and if I go into here, into the ad set for this ad, and I just show you, oh, this one's actually not a good example. Hang on, I'll go in here. So if I wanted to get to Christchurch, I wanted to create an ad in here, um, I, I will show you exactly what I would do. I would go, um, I would just call this Christchurch market. So if I go Christchurch, um, which I'll use Tauranga because, um, so if, let's just pretend it was Tauranga. When I would come into here, I wouldn't add anything in here. And when I get to location, I would literally just put Tauranga. Why is it not coming up? Because it likes case. Okay, so there's Tauranga there. So I've brought Tauranga in, and then I can decide how far out I want it to be, if I want it to be quite a way out, if I want to have it a bit less. Um, I can make this even more specific, so I could go something like, um, par, uh, par, is it Par Road or Pies, Pies Par Road? Yeah. Pies Par Road, so I could go Pies Par Road, 
And with Pi, if I go a specific address, I can actually go right down to like one or two or three or four or five kilometers. So you can actually make quite a small space. So like if you've, that's what we've done with Audible Optics. I'm sorry for outing you about this picture, but we've done a circumference for a certain amount of area around her shop. So around the um, the place that we, you go and get them. So you can have that as a different one. So those are two different audiences that I've got in there. And then I might just, edit the age a little bit because it might say it's only people over 30 or 25 or something like that and it will tell me how many people I'm reaching here all of these are a good number of size and that's literally the only targeting that you need to worry about when you're doing an ad so it is really simple and easy um, to create that you don't need to do a lot of fancy targeting but you can do a simple ad getting people to your website would be really important I'm just going to press stop on that getting people to your website and then you can do another one that's a retargeting ad with people who've been to your website because you've got that little bit of cookie on your website it's called a Facebook pixel that you get from business manager Facebook business manager so those of you that don't have Facebook business manager it's um, business typing it in hang on I'm not typing it in the right place If you go to business.facebook.com, you can set that up if you've got a Facebook page. Um, and um, yes, the amount you spend determines how many you see your ad. And it's a good question because the other thing is it's not expensive. So generally we say that you can spend between um, 3 to $5 a day locally. So that's $100 to $150 a month and you will get a really good return from that. So we work with a, a couple of local osteos here and a few other places around um, the country and they are spending $150, $100 to $150 a week depending on where they are and they are getting a lot of business from that. Um, one of the things that we do with our e-commerce businesses is we'll often say, hey, we're just going to market you locally with your store traffic ad and then we'll do e-commerce stuff other places. Um, and just doing those ads there, only often $50 a month and they will get a really large number of people coming to their, their shop constantly just from spending that amount of money. It's not expensive. It's not complicated. Uh, Yes, e-commerce ads and Facebook funnels and stuff like that are complicated. Yes, there are some very complicated ads you can do to get really tricky. But for you guys, seriously, learning a little bit around Facebook ads around those areas are not complicated. So it's something that I would really recommend you getting and adding on because it would help. Um, yes, I would definitely do $3 for 30 days versus $10 for three days because it's just that consistent ad over and over again will help you get that reach that you're looking for. So I'd much rather you did it consistently, $3 a day for, and just have it constantly going and just refresh the ad once a month. That's what we teach rather than having it um, having it a big sweep going through. So obviously you can do a big sweep if you've got like a big event with a short-term thing, but generally I would say have it consistently going um, all the time would be much better. Okay, you're right, everyone. How many of you going? That hurt my brain. I don't want to talk about it anymore. We're good. Okay, all right. Okay, the the next thing that you need to do is think about networking. So, do you belong to a networking group currently? Any of you? And what do you belong to? Not face to face. Exactly. It doesn't have to be face to face. Okay, so I personally don't have a, I don't belong to one. Um, I have with Petra, we belong to, um, yep, a few of them, yeah, COVID can stall them. Um, so I belong, I did belong to Venus for a while with Petra, um, which was good. Um, I I found it a bit frustrating for me because um, I kept on trying to say what I did and then other people would say, oh, that's what I do as well. I'd be like, okay, I'm running out of things I do. So I found it, but I found it personally frustrating, but I found the people there lovely, um, like Petra. Um, but I, um, so so there are networking. So for some of you, networking groups can be great. Um, sometimes it's just a time of life thing. Um, I often find that if you are a mum of younger kids or school age kids or children with issues, I had children with itch issues, um, that it's often they're not very friendly for that. Um, they're often better, they're more suited, the times are often more suited for people who don't have those issues or constraints. 
Um, but there's also there is also a lot of networking you can do locally, just online as well. So um, we come back to LinkedIn. Yes, you can definitely use LinkedIn to network locally with other people. Um, you can network locally on Facebook groups, so adding value. So it's not about coming in and selling all the time. So I, it's such a turn off to me that someone would turn up to a group of people online and go sell, 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 sell. Um, it's just not great. Yeah, I think I think that the social thing can be really good, but never underestimate the fact that we are always networking. Um, I have gained customers just from having a conversation in a fruit and veggie shop in Stanmore Bay. Um, it's all about networking with people, uh, interactively building relationships. And I think too, for business owners, it's really easy for us to become quite isolated. So having that really helps to kind of remember those connections. So networking is not selling. Networking is not about having um, like a sales pitch in the back of your head all the time, but it is really important to have an answer for, you know, what do you do and explaining what you do. Um, and have it ready because it will come up. It's natural that it comes up. So having that is really important locally because you never know who people, where people are there. Um, my husband um, Rod plays golf. Um, it, obviously, golf is a lot of a chat chat. It's very social, um, and so you know it's talking a long way. So he'll often come home and say, "Hey, I was talking to so and so, um, and they were saying that so and so needs some help, and so he's connecting us with them." So that that's how that networking idea happens. Is in a community, we are always networking. It's, it's just a reminder to be you know mindful of that um, I have a sign ridden car I've actually picked up customers um, from having my car when we used to live those who are like locals are we still on Vipon Road so my car was out visible from the street and we actually used to get clients who would um, had driven past the car and saw it um, and then that actually helped yeah working from home can be low <laughs> yeah my car in the inside isn't great I pay my daughter to tidy it up um, and she doesn't seem to take it very seriously so it needs a clean at the moment but but yeah, so that can be, a, you know, it is important to have that ability just to connect with people. Um, yeah, Vipon Rouge, um, missed my time there. Um, but now, of course, we've done a long drive so no one can see that. But that networking thing is really important to make sure that you've got that going um, and connecting with people in your community. And, um, you know, try not to piss off a large number of people in your community because that makes things really hard. Um, and, and I think one of the things is with the community thing is, there is a danger of having people who are not great for your business coming in and, and working with you and then and then there's a problem with that. And, and that can really be decimating. I've worked with businesses where they've had one bad cookie come in and work with them and it's created a lot of problems down the track. And so there's just a reminder you can rise above that. Just ignore that if that happens. That is one of the problems with small towns and smaller communities. Just lift yourself ahead of it. Don't get caught in the politics. Don't talk about the stuff be positive and just rise yourself above. So while they're talking about all that stuff, they'll just attract all the negative people with them and you can rise above and, and work with the people that are amazing um, and awesome. So just, you know, sometimes it won't be have people all the way through, you know, since we've changed, um, we've had, um, we've worked with probably maybe two or 300 people in the last couple of years. We've still had two people who really didn't like us and were really upset with us and have have given us terrible reviews or something. That will happen sometimes. Even if you're good at what you do, that will happen. Um, you learn from it and you go, what could I have done better? And what was it that the communication, where did it fall down? But it is very important to go, you still will get those sometimes. You still will get people who aren't happy. Um, and just remember in a local community, it's just rising above. That's that trust build um, that works. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, Rowan. I'm okay. I do get really upset about it. Um, but I also know that it just reminds me to, to rise. Okay. So we haven't mentioned traditional marketing in here. And I'm just going to cover this through. Um, we're probably going to finish this a little bit earlier. It's always hard when you write a, when you do a thing, but I'm here for questions, so we can have questions at the end. Um, so, just one of the things we haven't talked about traditional marketing. So, I started my career before I did marketing. I was a freelance writer, and so I love traditional marketing. I love. I have a column and stuff. That column is powerful. Um, 
I know that whatever I write in that column, it brings in leads for us. Um, I didn't actually do it for that. I did it because I love writing. Someone asked me to do it and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. That sounds great. Um, so I didn't do it to, as a marketing tool, but I've actually reminded me how powerful it can be. Um, however, I did in our local paper, there was a, we had a couple of local papers. I also had columns in those and they did nothing for two years. So, you know, like traditional marketing is, a, is one of those awkward things. I normally advise businesses that quite often it's easy to go and get sold that that kind of newspaper thing or that radio or whatever it is. If you don't have that other stuff I've talked about that we talked about today, like the Google My Business, got your website sorted out, you've got your Facebook and you've got regular posts going up, I don't want you to touch traditional marketing. To me, traditional marketing is now the icing on the cake. It's not where you start. And I am amazed at how many people don't want to spend 50 bucks a month on Facebook ads, but quite happily spend 2K a month putting their ads up in a cinema or um, spending 750 bucks to be in the paper and get no leads from it. So make sure you've got your digital stuff right all those bits and pieces done first before you look at traditional marketing but we are going to just have a little chat about it so depending on when you are radio can actually be really cheap um, for those of people that live in the Rodney area you can get radio ads for three or four hundred dollars a month which might be really expensive for some of you but for established businesses that's not actually a large amount of money and um, the key with it is is to have a really clear game plan and not do it forever so we still we used to do radio um, to increase brand awareness when we first started um, and I and the best thing I recommend to do is if you are going to do radio locally See if you can get the phone-ins, because the phone-ins are the 90-second um, interviews with you and them, and that's the trust building. So the ads add buffer, but actually the phone-ins are the most important part, because again, it's that whole opportunity to share what you're doing and talking and having those little interviews, help people interact with you and feel like they know who you are. We still get referrals and work from people who heard our radio, interview, radio meetings and interviews three or four years ago. So it does have a long-term benefit, much more than print, because print, obviously, it's not audible. And, you know, today's paper often becomes tomorrow's fish and chips wrappers, um, painful as painful as a writer as that may be but that audio works really well like video it works super super well um, but what I recommend is get that other stuff done first before you add in the traditional marketing um, for some of you it will work really well dentists you know having a spot as a dentist if you're targeting the older population having a bit in the paper will work really well. Having a little ad regularly in there is great, but just don't get sold into it and get the depth. The thing is that if you're getting pushed something on a sale, if you're coming at it as a plan, because it's strategic and you go, this is what I'm doing, that's good. If you're doing it as a reactionary thing, because someone has come into you as a good salesperson and sown a whole lot of seeds of doubt for you, the answer to me normally is no. Um, I've worked now with, with quite a lot of local businesses who are big businesses where I've cut over $100,000 of their budget out of mass marketing. And we've been out, like it was $150,000 for some of them, and we've replaced some of that budget into digital. And their businesses have grown 10, 20, 30% since we started working with them. Um, and these are retailers and service-based businesses. And they haven't had that extra hundred thousand dollars spend a month that they uh, a year that they had to do. So that traditional marketing um, isn't the catch-all that most people think it is. I'm pro. Let me be straight. I'm pro media. I'm pro print. I'm pro radio. I'm pro TV. But people often put that first, and they don't do the digital stuff properly first. Do the digital stuff properly first. And then you can do that. Um, who who has been caught out by a really good? Um, yeah, so fly, flyers are great as long as they are combined with Facebook and newsletters. Um, and yes, yes, Catherine, that's actually a great um, a great thing as around, around that as well. So. If you are a, um, that reminded me, thank you, Catherine. Um, so say you are someone who goes into someone's home or business and you've got a service that does that, one of the best things you can do is have a great flyer and do what I would call the real estate drop. So you go into that business and then you come out 
and 10 houses or businesses down that side, 10 houses of business down that side, and 20 on the other side of the street, you just basically put a flyer in each one of those letter boxes. And just doing that one thing can help. So it's one of the things I recommend to early childhood centers, actually, is if you get an enrollment from a, a child at a, at a, at a, at a um, at a um, on a road, um, you can go down that road and say, have a thing saying, hi, um, families from this area have recently enrolled in our centre, we'd love to see you too. And you can pop that in their letter boxes and that often will lift some more enrolments because it's that whole thing of, oh, other people in our area are doing that, that's a good idea. It works really well for hairdressers, it works really well for um, massage therapists, it works really well for anyone. We've got a client who um, works with trees. That's a really easy thing to do is to actually just go, I'm on site or as a builder or a painter, I'm just going to drop something in this local area and that works super great because it's that third party referral, especially if you happen to be at that place um, all day and they can see your truck or they can see you there, that's a really good way to do that as well. So, so traditional marketing terms of leaflets and flyers are great, but they have to be combined with the other stuff. It's not a standalone. Um, and make sure that your flyer or your information has a call to action. Make sure it's got like a why they need to work with you, the benefits that you're going to work with them, and good contact information. And here's a really important thing, follow up. If someone gets in contact with you, follow up. Um, a few months ago, oh, last year we were looking for cleaners for the office and for our house. Um, and I contacted, I think it was seven local cleaning companies. And out of the seven local cleaning companies that I contacted, only one of them got back to us. So the other ones we work with, I don't even know if they're the cheapest. They, I don't think they're the cheapest, but they got the work because they're the only ones. Um, about a month later, I got a re, I got a request to review the services, or the way that they're dealt with, um, one of the other ones. And I emailed back and said, you guys didn't even get in contact with me. I can't even review how you did because you just didn't even bother to reply. And then the next day, one of them rang me and said, oh, look, we'll come and see you now. It's too late, Buster. You know, like replying back is super important and I've got like someone just uh, messaged me before saying oh she couldn't catch today but she's going to do it tomorrow and I and I'm late ringing replying back to her you know normally we're really really good at trying to make sure even if we're busy through the day we, we sit down every night and we go through our emails um, sometimes eight or nine o'clock at night just to make sure we're answering people back um, no, um, yellow pages online, I wouldn't do the paid yellow pages. I would do the free yellow pages and not the paid. Um, I wouldn't use the online paid um, version at all. That's a really good question, Pete, because people often get caught up in it. Um, but we don't say it's a good investment at all. We'd much rather you put your investment and time into other things other than yellow pages and do that free search for free business directories online and you'll find that more of those free ones come up that you can put your name in obviously things like no cowboys and other things like that are good for tradies as well um, but yeah don't spend the money on that they are also really good at spending making you spend money another question somewhat people often have is around google ads so if you're going to do google ads don't do them with the yellow pages um, they actually are really shifty and they don't let you own your own account which i'm really anti um, make sure that you own your own accounts on everything that you do. Whatever you do, make sure you own your own accounts. Um, and with Google uh, My Business, do not, when you run, when you get your Google My Business um, page up, Google then says to you, hey, would you like some advertising credit? And you go, oh, wow, that's so amazing. Don't do it. Because they give you Google AdWords Express. And Google AdWords Express is not a good way to market your business. You need just Google AdWords. Um, because there's a thing in Google AdWords where you're allowed to take um, search terms out that people don't want. Yeah, so don't use that credit, Jenny don't use it. You can use it if you have proper AdWords, but don't use it on that credit with the AdWords Express because it will just rip through. It won't give you the return that you want. Um, it will just be a waste and then you'll keep on spending it going, maybe it's going to get better and it just won't. So just don't do it. Um, so, so don't use that credit. Um, you need proper Google AdWords. So the two options are get someone to set it up for you who's properly qualified um, or go and learn how to properly do it. And I say that as someone, and people will have heard this before if you've seen Penis webinars, um, I say that as someone who was a bit cross that everyone else on my team were fully AdWords certified. I was like, I can do that. It's easy. Uh, and I ripped through $120 worth of budget within about um, 
25 minutes uh, because I missed checking a box about a particular targeting thing. It's a very easy thing to get wrong. So I do recommend that you do actually either get full training in it yourself, like go and do a course on it. There's heaps of ones on the internet. Um, or you get fully, um, get someone to properly set it up for you and run it. Um, but most of the time, um, if you have that Google AdWords, again, it's the last thing I'd add with everything else in. Um, and we have clients who basically have everything going. They've got their regular posting they've got their google my business page and they have google ads and and then facebook that facebook capturing things and they just turn those on and off again depending on how many people they get for leads and that's enough for them to do for their marketing it's simple it's easy um, and it gives you a good return so that's basically how it works all the way through all right so this is our last slide guys um and i have finished a little bit earlier i i'm hoping that's okay with everybody um but here's a couple of things i'm hoping that there's something that you're going to take action and i'd love to hear now is there something that you've taken from today that you go yep this is something i'm going to do today or coming out of today heaps Oh, specifics are good too, guys. You know, no, no pressure. <laughs> What's something specifically? PO box address. Anything else? So the Google stuff, great location for Facebook ads. Um, cool. Google My Business. Excellent, guys. Yay, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, Google My Business is really powerful. And the free business directory. So you just literally Google... Um, if you just go free, um, free business, um, business directories. And I think that if you're, I'll, I'll actually go and find the link for the ones that we recommend. Um, we've got a list that we give people, um, free um, business directories. So I'm going to copy and paste this into here. This is actually from another marketing agency, actually. Um, because ours is, we, don't, we have one, but it's not online. So I'm just going to grab this for you. Um, but they have a really cool thing with a list of the free directories that you can use. So I would go to that, um, copy and paste that, and actually just go through it and just register yourself on all the ones that are under there and link. I think there's we have extra ones on ours, but that will give you a really good start. Um, so the other thing is we've got a free Facebook group. So in the email you get this afternoon, we've got a request uh, link. So if you want to come in that group, I do. At the moment, I'm doing a live every day. It's not always on marketing. Sometimes it's just on you know, checking in with how people are or a bit of help in there. Um, we have free webinars that, are, that people only can get if they're in that group. So we often have those in there due for one coming up um we also just give tips and ideas often if i've learned something and i'm particularly delighted with it i'll show you how to do it in there so there's that kind of like ongoing help and you can ask any questions in there and the reason i say that is that often you know you, you might have a question coming out of today i just can't manage um answering those questions in my inbox um so um so that so that will be there um I know I'm not selling. I'm not. Um, so yes, what what I would recommend is there's. I'll get to that bit in a second. Is that okay? Profile flaws in there. Um, so so doing the free Facebook group. Um, we've got a free school. You're going to get a link to it in your emails today. Um, it's toolbox. It actually was something we had as a membership program. Um, at the beginning of the year, I had this real compulsion to make it free. So we actually made it free and it became free pretty much just before lockdown. So I think it was like something in me knowing that there was going to be a big thing this year. No, I don't think so. Um, but it's co good coincidence. We've had now since, since, since lockdown, we've had almost 500 people go through um, toolbox, which is really awesome. But it's a full online um, marketing training thing. It's evergreen. So it doesn't have anything fully snazzy in it there doesn't have to be like how to do lives or reels or things like that but it's good basic marketing strategy help and you can walk through it in your own pace we ask you for your email so that we can give you email support through it thanks Deirdre um, and one of the things I'd say about it is we do that email because we want to help you but we won't market to you so we've made it completely standalone from identify we don't make you come and talk to us I think Deirdre could say that too and Joe you know it's not a sales thing we don't secretly slide you into a big sales pitch um, so you just don't get that you just get to use that yourself it's us trusting the process of knowing that that's the thing they have yeah no hidden funnels there's no hidden funnels in there and the last thing is get some funded help so in the email you're getting this afternoon 
there's a link to the COVID-19 funding. Um, you can maybe also get 100% um, funding through um, COVID, uh, through the Regional Business Partner Network to help you. Not everyone can get it. So if you're not GST registered, it's not, uh, not available. Um, but there's also capability funding. So you can get 100% funding or 50%. We have no say in whether you're eligible or not. Um, and we won't, we don't assess you. It goes straight there. So I've given you the link to that place if you want to see. And you don't just need to use it for marketing. Um, yeah, so you can get it on all sorts of things. You can get it on well-being. You can get it on, um, I, I've been doing stuff around sales. You can get it on HR. Um, you can get it on legal advice, which is really good for some of you. Um, I've had clients who've used it for with us and also with HR help. Um, you can get it for accountancy advice. It's a really good opportunity to use that money. It is 100% funded, and then there's also the 50% capability. So, so if you are wanting stuff and help, you know, you are welcome to give me an email. I'm really, if you're tiny, if you're a little business, um, I will push you towards free options. Um, you can still bully me into working with you, but I'd rather you just, I want you to be looked after and make sure that you're doing things right. So we can do that. But these are the things that we can do to help you moving forward um, and, and work through. So um, one of the things, just before I finish, um, you can just... Um, You'll have an email for me this afternoon and you can hit reply to that if you want to. Um, so guys, just a couple of questions. Um, is there anything else you'd like me to cover off before we finish today? And the second one is just checking how you are. Yes, so I, I am totally going to be in... Um, oh, so um, yes, so you need to make a link to get your phone number to be click, um, clickable. Um, and I am coming to Tauranga. Actually, I can tell you when I'm coming. Um, we've rescheduled the date. It's not till November. We wanted to give lots of time, and obviously, um, I'm fully booked in September and nearly fully booked in October. So that was uh, why we made it then. But I think the time is. Let me just tell you, we've rebooked for 18th of November, um, and you'll get a replay to this two hours later. It'll come and be linked in for you. Um, so we've got that, and a couple of other things. Um, tomorrow we've got a free webinar on selling. So if you're in a professional services business, there's an hours free one on how to improve converting leads. Um, so you can come along to that if you want to. Again, no selling in it. It's just useful. It's my give back um, to you guys. So if you want to come to that, it's just go back to, um, there'll be a link to it this afternoon in the email you get too. Just remember that I did that. So yes, otherwise, have a beautiful, beautiful day. Hope everything's great. Um, and I am going to finish my coffee, which is now cold. You're very welcome, guys. Have a good day.